Stuart Thompson, the T in WCT Engineering, uh, world-class team. Dakar looms. It's a big race for you guys. It's a big race, Colin. I mean, this year or next year's event is perhaps a little bit... Um, we're in a bit of a state of flux when it comes to Dakar. So we have a car running. Um, Henny de Klerk is, is running our T1 Plus Hilux, which is essentially our prototype T1 Plus car. We're not directly involved with running it. Chart van der Volt and his team are running the car for Henny. And, um, you know, we obviously have high hopes, but um, as, as I said earlier, uh, we are already in a, in a big build-up for the Dakar, Dakar the year after. So very excited about that. The car behind us here is, is what we're pinning our hopes on. It's, a, I guess, a, a logical development of Henny's car. And it's certainly something that, that we believe can be a, you know, quite a, a competitive proposition. And it's a bit of a hybrid um, in many ways. So you've got the chassis and you've, you're dressing it in a body and a, with a new motor. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a stopgap, in all honesty. It's, a, it's an Amarok, Amarok car, but initially we're using a, an engine of a different brand. Um, the intention is to go with a, a VW Group engine, but there isn't one that's available in the sort of time frame that we need. So we're going to use the other engine, which is a, a, you know, a, should be a very good V6 from another manufacturer until the VW engine is available. That was very interesting, the capacity of the the VW Group engine is a little bit bigger than, than the normal three and a half litres and still turboed. Well, the rules have, have changed fairly recently um, to allow four litre engines. So we are looking at maximising that. And what it does is it, um, it opens the door to, oh, you know, logically some other engines. You know, I'm sure as you know, and you've, you've been there this morning, Century have opted for the 2.9 Audi, which I think is, is a very, very good choice. And that car of theirs is... You know, it's obviously magnificent, and we're certainly what, going to be watching how it goes with, with keen interest. But our feeling is with the capacity limit having been lifted to four litres, it perhaps makes more sense to run a bigger engine. It's not only cars and the, the T1 Ultimate um, class that you're in. You've spent a long, long time uh, designing, building the South Racing side-by-sides. Yeah, so I mean that's that's a, a car that Achim designed. Um, we built one locally, which is the car that Jeff Minnett won this year's championship in, and then South Racing have built chassis to that design, and I think they're on, you know, something ridiculous like number 165. So they build the chassis, they pay us a royalty, and we supply a few of the parts. We supply suspension parts and radiators, and you know we. Um, we have a very good relationship with South Racing, and um, they've been a fantastic partner in that. So, for sure, you know the, the Can-Am is a, it's been a, a really good uh, good car for us business-wise, and it's obviously been massively successful. I mean, I think it's won the last four Dakars and World Championships, so it's it's fantastic. It's a really really good car. And that's quite nice to know that the thing that carries the WCT chassis number and designed upstairs here, it's got to be quite satisfying for. You as a whole team, the, I mean the WCT team, that you design and build world-class cars. Well, Colin, absolutely. And I think it's testament to, to Achim's ability. You know, he can, he's, I think he's very good at conceptualizing a car that is good straight out of the box. And, you know, perhaps one of the frustrations we've had with, with cross-country cars is we've typically built a car, kicked it out the door, and we never see it again. And that's why... This car in particular is so exciting because it's a, a new design and we'll be running it. And, and obviously also very excited to work with the PS Laser team and Daniel Schroeder and Ryan Bland as Navigator. I think they're a very, very strong team. So it's, it's very exciting to have this opportunity. Daniel always gives it full beans and great value as a driver. Yeah, he's a, he's a racer and it's, um, I guess that's what we like here. Stuart, it's not only the, the cars you run in th this area here, you've built the majority of the, the new um, GTC cars, um, you're building a new and exciting new single-seater. What is it about, what's the history behind the single-seater and what's, what's it all about? Colin, I'd, I'm sure as you know, Ian Schofield has been the sort of driving force between, behind local single-seater racing for a long time. He's He's passionate about Formula Fords in particular and single-seaters in general. And his vision is that 
going forward, you need a car with a halo. You know, it's, um, it's a formula by definition and by design that caters towards young drivers and, you know, young hot, hot shoes. And, you know, it's, again, almost by definition, there's a lot of cut and thrust involved. And with the halo now, or the halo type system, having become, become proven and, you know, without question, you know, a lifesaver, it, it's, it's almost a no-brainer to go racing without one. The car is quite a bit of a development from, you know, we watched the, the historic races in, in the UK a couple of months ago. It's gone a long way from the very, very early days of Formula Ford. It's now got Halo, it's got um, a form of aerodynamics, it's got tethers. It's become a small, truly modern racing car. Yeah, in, indeed. And the, and the brief to us from Ian was to build a tubular chassis Formula 4 car. So it's, um, it conforms to all the Formula 4 specifications and safety standards, but tubular framed, which in the depths of, uh, of the dark continent is, is easier to run, easier to build, and perhaps more importantly, easier to repair. So we are hoping that there's a bit of a demand for this car. It's certainly the sort of car that I believe could be a, a sort of a, a solution to a regional championship. And it's very exciting. I mean, as you've touched on, it's got, you know, safety, you know, tethers, the halo, it's got side impact protection, it's got a removable seat. So it's got all the stuff that the old generation cars were lacking. Uh, a little turbo engine, which is, again, you know, the, the way forward, sequential gearbox. So it should really be a cost-effective car and, and give, you know, I would think probably 95% of what Formula 4 offers at... You know, as a thumb suck, 30% of the cost. So, quite exciting. When are you going to test one? That is uh, a very pertinent question. So, uh, yeah, we'd like to have one running early in the new year. We, we were on track to have one running a little bit sooner, but um, there's been a change of engine. and We were quite, quite far down the road of the engine installation, so we've had to change that. But I think long term it's for the better. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's moving forward with pace. What's, uh, what else is exciting, apart from what we've already mentioned from a, a racing point of view going into 2024? Colin, I think the other thing that's big news is that GTC has, uh, has had a big injection of interest. So they're going to be, you know, there's some new cars, some new drivers, um, and a rebranding of the series. So, you know, without wanting to spill the beans, it won't be known as GTC. Um, in my opinion, it's a long overdue name change, which will be very exciting and that'll be launched in the new year. But certainly Toyota have shown their commitment, which is great. It's, um, I think they've recognized that it's a really good premier circuit racing formula. Very exciting drivers. I mean, I think it, it really does attract the cream of South African talent. And, you know, it's obviously the downside is that, you know, being so competitive, it's, it's you know, it's... It can be very fraught, which it is this year. I mean, as you know, there's no champion as yet. And unfortunately, the champion will be decided in the courtroom. So, some, again, some moves afoot to change that. You know, there's, um, there's going to be a new structure with a, a driver, a permanent driver conduct official, you know, a few changes in the technical management of the series. And uh, I think very exciting. I think it's, it could really be... a a new dawn for, for what is South Africa's de facto premier championship. And it's not only the talent behind the wheels that it's um, attractive to and that it attracts the top talent, but also the mechanicians and the engineers and the teams that run it. Because to run, you're playing up against the, the cream of the crop in terms of engineers and mechanics. Yeah, Colin, I think that's important too. You know, you need a car that's challenging. They, are, they require, you know, Quite a, quite a commitment engineering-wise, you know, in terms of both chassis and engine tuning. And again, that for next year is going to move up a notch. The cars are changing spec. You know, the one big change is it'll, have a, it'll go away from a spool to a, a limited slip differential, which will open up a whole new window of, of, of tuning possibilities. So very and, and the thing with that is you now, the current um, suspension setup basically goes out the window. And also, to a degree, some of the, the way the guys have learned to drive them. So, I mean, a simple change, seemingly simple, has massive ramifications. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, as you say, it's going to be a, you know, a whole new game. 
but um, exciting. And I suppose, in a way, with the cars, they were getting to the point where they were a little bit stale. So they should be quite a lot faster, um, probably a bit more spectacular. And, and certainly, I would think, uh, nicer to drive. So I think the, you know, the guys, all the kids... I, I guess it's the old story with racing, and it's, um, it's something you'll identify with, but every young driver needs something to aspire to. And I think if, if we get it right, GTC will... Uh, it probably is already, but GTC will become the formula that all the young hotshots want to race in. And that, to me, is, is fantastic. Is there anything drivers can do to minimise the the touching, not so much the touching, but the you know, the fraughtness uh, in in the close stuff that doesn't always have to go to court? Yeah, Colin, it's something that that we as a as a series, in conjunction with MSA, are are looking very closely at. As I mentioned, there will be a a permanent driver conduct official of the calibre that all the drivers will respect and. I'm certainly hoping be happy to work with. And, and as you've touched on, that is the challenge. Is I think the, the current rules as they stand were stifling the racing to a degree. And um, we're looking at, a, at massaging the rules a bit, having looked at BTCC and supercars and just trying to get the balance right that will allow the guys to race without it turning into a demolition derby. Because you certainly don't want smashed cars after every race. But you do want the guys to race. You want the guys to be able to have a go. And, you know, I think, again, going back to, to the status of the formula as the, as the premier series, you want good racing. I think already it's at the point where, you know, certainly the, you know, the pit's empty and the, and the pit wall fills up whenever there's a GTC race. And I think that's, that's what you want. And um, certainly we're all working very hard to, to try and improve it. Exciting times. Single-seaters, rally raid. Um, top end saloon cars what else that's why we're on a roll what else is good well Colin I mean we you know almost as a bit of a, a busman's holiday we, we, we're involved in the in the endurance series which is fantastic it's I mean I think it's probably fair to say against the odds the, the team have the SAES and the SAGT team have, have pulled off a fantastic season ending race at Kyle Army so we're busy getting prepared for that. And that's, you know, it's, for us, it's racing at a, at a slightly different level. It's, um, while it's still very serious and competitive, it's, um, the emphasis is a bit different to, to going uh, GDC racing. So we're looking forward to it. And it's, it's, always, it's always fun to, you know, to try and be on top of, a, of another form of racing. And you've got Henk and Hein Lodekhan in the Porsche in, a, in with a shout for the championship. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously Henk is injured, which is unfortunate. So he's still out of action. He's, um, he's hurt his shoulder, which is, you know, he's, he's certainly having to pay attention and, and get it fixed properly. And, you know, that's, that's progressing well as far as I'm aware. But as a fill-in, we've got Keegan Masters, who's, I mean, he's probably the best Porsche driver this, this country has ever produced. So a real treat to have him in the car. Stuart? It's, I love coming here because, A, there's always a different racing car here and an interesting bits of racing car, but it's lovely to the atmosphere and everything here and, and to see the developments that go on, Stuart. Thank you very much and congratulations on, on all the new developments and I hope that the next year is damn good. Well, I hope so too, Colin, but thank you. Have a good one. You too. Cheers.